International Marketing Manager at Sedba School in Cumbria. Um, fantastic full boarding school, one of only a few remaining in the United Kingdom. Um, but how my career started is, is a long story, but I'll, I'll tell you very briefly. It's um, basically, I never expected to be working in the education sector. It was something which just happened by chance and something that I certainly do not regret. Um, it is a very ex exciting sector to be in. So I, 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 I finished university. I um, then wanted to get some experience just to, as we all do, want to improve our CVs when applying for jobs. And I actually worked in a voluntary role for eight months at a college, uh, working in their marketing department. And I was given that opportunity by a, a friend who unfortunately is no longer with us. And he, he uh, spoke to his boss and I worked directly alongside her in this marketing role. And after eight months of only being paid 42 pounds to get the bus uh, every single month, I, I eventually applied for a, for a paid job at, at Newcastle University um, within their careers department. And so I was working in marketing again there, but it was actually down to my grandma why I ended up in the independent sector. Because after six months in a job, I'm not looking for a new role. And she was reading the, the local Evening Chronicle paper and she cut out a section as they all do, or they used to, uh, the job section said, David, is this not what you do? Is, could you not apply for this? And I said, well, it's a marketing manager's role. I've only been out of university less than two years. It's a, it's a, huge, um, a huge task. But I thought, well, why not? We, we all like opportunities, we all like challenges. And I thought, right, I'll apply for it. And I received a phone call, was interviewed, um, full presentation, and I was offered the job. And it was unbelievable. And that was a, that was a day school. Um, and after that, I was, I was there for around 19, um, 19 months um, before the, the deputy head at the time moved on to become head at a school in Cumbria. Um, and asked whether I would move over and lead the marketing um, at his new school. So I, I jumped at that uh, opportunity and thought, right, definitely, it's a boarding school uh, and day school, and there's opportunities there. Um, and then from there, I moved up to Scotland and experienced a, a single-sex um, Catholic school um, before moving to Sedba, where I am now. Um, and Sedba was always on my radar. And it had been since I first moved over to Cumbria. So when this opportunity to lead the international marketing uh, came up, I obviously made sure that I applied for that position. And I've, I've never looked back. It's a, it's a, it's a position that I, I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, a typical day for me at the moment, um, obviously, is, is considerably different to how it was um, several months ago. But... But there isn't really a typical day for me because, because I'm working in so many different areas of the school, the international marketing side of things, the UK marketing, working very closely with our prep school marketing team as well. It's quite an all round um, position um, and we are very hands on. But at Sedbo, we're also very fortunate that we have a lot of support from the rest of the team, the senior management, um, the governors as well. And I think that makes it a lot more enjoyable but for example two weeks ago I was I was at a well attending a virtual British boarding schools workshop and um, I had over 80 appointments over the five days 20 minute appointments and I calculated that I would traveled over two, 200,000 miles virtually um, which which is certainly something that I would, wouldn't be able to do normally but it was fantastic and, and that's the the sort of job that I have, it's very much about networking, it's um, maintaining our relationships with our overseas agents for recruiting students, um, looking at our local markets uh, and making sure that we are um, have regular campaigns running, uh, working with the rest of the team and, and making sure that we have the full support of our staff as well in the school and, they, and that they understand what the marketing department's actually doing. Um, because I think some schools struggle to get that message across that it's, it's not just the marketing department that are responsible for promoting a school. It, it's everyone, even down to the students and the parents. 
Um, we all know word of mouth marketing is the most valuable and also the cheapest <laughs> form of marketing. Um, and that's, I think that's a really important part of the role. Um, but in terms of a typical day, I could be one minute in a COVID meeting at the moment, and the next minute I could be on, to, on, a, on a Zoom call to one of our agents in Spain or Nigeria or Russia. Um, it, it changes all the time, but that's what makes working in the marketing environment within the independent sector extremely enjoyable because every day is different. Part, part, of my, part of my role is um, obviously international recruitment uh, and marketing. So that, that does involve a lot of international traveling. Um, so I'd say probably in total, I'm away for around two and a half to three months of the year. Um, I do my sort of international trips slightly different to others. I, I kind of do very short trips. So sometimes I'm only in Russia for two and a half days before flying back. Um, but so pre pre COVID, I was I was regularly traveling. The busiest periods are between August, well, end of August, all the way through to March, and then it starts to quieten down a little bit. Um, but because I'm also responsible for recruiting for the International Summer School, there's there's another area that I uh, have to focus my attention on, and we try and do a lot of cross marketing of the different areas of the school. But moving forward, we are very excited by, by um, obviously boarding a plane again and traveling the world and, and meeting our agents and our parents because it's, it's those face-to-face -face meetings which make it much easier to talk about um, a school and give them a genuine impression of, of, of who they are and, and the sort of staff that their children will be meeting. And I think that's very valuable. And... I think also when it comes down to schools, it's making sure that the right staff are doing those trips as well. Uh, that is something that is, that is very important. But we are, we are currently planning our, our overseas travel for next year. Um, we're, we're looking at trips at the moment to the UAE, where we, we already deliver sports courses throughout the year, rugby, netball courses, um, and we're gonna develop that program further. And also looking at programs in, in Japan and doing some travel out to Japan and Russia and Europe. But again, it will all come down to uh, guidelines and what we can and can't do. Um, but it's going to be very important that we maintain that balance of virtual uh, meetings and also face to face. So in, in my current role, like I said, I, I, I couldn't work within a better team of individuals. And, and that's, I think that's what makes the job so enjoyable. But in September 2019, um, we had spent uh, nearly 12 months working on our new campaign. And I would say the launch of our Spirit of Semper campaign in September uh, has certainly been the best and probably one of the most challenging things we, we've worked on and, and I've worked on, but also one of the most rewarding. Um, Working with Aphixius and Miles at Aphixius was just an unbelievable experience. Someone that I've been trying to work with for many years in my different schools and the budgets haven't allowed or, or it just wasn't the right sort of thing at the time. But when we, when we signed the, the agreement with Aphixius and we knew we were going to be producing such an exciting campaign, um, we were all very excited by it. And I'll, I'll never forget the day when we actually received the first draft um, of the video, after all of these months of hard work, um, nine hour days of recording, um, we were actually at the, during the first week of our summer school um, on Lake Windermere. And I was with my, with my colleague, Matthew Burns at the time, and we were walking back up from the lake after taking photographs of the international students canoeing and, and building rafts. And the email just came through. I must have had a signal on my phone suddenly because generally you wouldn't get a signal. And I was like, Matthew, the, the video's come through, the, the first draft. And we actually went straight up to the main building, locked ourselves away in this, in this room and uh, got the laptop out. And we just watched two minutes and three seconds, sat in silence. And it was incredible. We, we sat there and we looked at each other and just said, Aphixius and Semper have produced a piece of art. It's something which will last. 
Um, it's so powerful. We had goosebumps watching it. And um, that's when you know you've worked on something which is very rewarding and exciting. And since that, it's gone on to have over 300,000 views on, online, continuing to grow as we start to develop um, Wolfie 2.0, as we've called it at the moment, as it involves the Sedba Wolf. Um, and it's, it's a very exciting future for, for Sedba. Um, and we look forward to developing that further. And it's, it's recently won some awards. It's up for some more awards as well for brand communication. And uh, we can't wait to see that evolve further over the next few years. I think the most challenging thing that I've been faced with is, is the current situation, to be perfectly honest, that the COVID situation has, is a huge challenge for us, but I think it's how we deal with challenges. So when we, when we first came back from, from the Christmas holidays, yes, we knew about this virus, but we weren't actually sure of what the scale of that was going to be. And the challenge that we're faced with now is just this level of uncertainty of, of our students going to return, are we doing the right things from a marketing perspective, the right sort of messages to try and recruit students, but we're no longer just talking about our schools. We're also talking about an entire sector. Because sometimes the challenges you're faced are just ones that affect your school only. Oh, are, are, you, are, you, um, are your class sizes too small and people aren't interested? Or are, are you not offering a particular subject? You can, you can very quickly change those sort of things. But when it's actually an entire sector, it's a bigger challenge. And I think, I think that's why COVID is such a huge challenge at the moment. But what it has done, and I would say this is something which is, is, is sector-wide, is it's made us all start to actually think differently. Um, and that's what we have to do with ch challenges. We have to look at the opportunities that come from that. And we're all starting to think differently and look at, look at virtual open days. Before COVID, had a school done a virtual open day? I, I'm not aware of one, um, but, but we, we're all doing them now and we're all, we're all have, our, have our own ways of doing them, which is great. But what we're also seeing now as well is schools collaborating, sharing best practice. And this is something that I've been talking about for years when I've been doing presentations at conferences is that we actually need to come together and talk about the sector as a whole and, and, and forget that we are competitors and things like that. And, and that's what this situation's done. It, it's created opportunities. So yeah, so COVID, COVID I would say has been the biggest challenge. Um, but what I like about it is the opportunities that it's created. Um, and for example, at SEDPA, we, we knew something, we knew lockdown was potentially approaching. So we were having to look at, well, oh, do we offer revision classes? Because the GCSEs and A-level students aren't gonna be, are gonna be missing out. So we started to develop additional revision programs for the students, but then obviously they scrapped the exams, which then put that on hold. But what we have done is we've created a program which in the future we could implement to our students or other students, surrounding students, state school students um, in the future. And, and that's the sort of opportunities that have been created as well. So, so for some, for some, um, for some marketing departments within schools, obviously I've worked in quite a few schools, um, and they've all been different. And one of the challenges that you can be faced with is trying to get the entire staff body, teachers, um, other non-teaching staff as well, um, aware and on on side when it comes to to marketing events. Um, actually, taking time out of their own free time to take part in open days and things like that. But how, how you can get around that issue is very much about making sure that you're fully immersed in the school itself. So you're actually attending staff room meetings, the common room meetings on a lunchtime or break times, um, and you're actually putting yourself out there um, and making sure that they're aware of who you are and what you do. And that's something which is very important very early on when you start a position in a school. I was. I was given a very, well, one of the best induction programs I've ever received when I started SEDPA. Um, I started, it was back end of November, and 
the principal said to me, right, David, I don't want you to do any of your like job description work until after Christmas. All I want you to do is fully immerse yourself in the school, actually go to lessons with international students, because at that time I was specifically just focusing on international students, sit with them, experience what they, what they go through, attend lunch on every boarding house, which was fantastic, but obviously I put weight on as well during that. Um, and just attend, attend evening programs, weekend activities and things like that. And what that meant when I was traveling early January um, on my first overseas trip for SEDBA, I actually understood what it was like to be a boarder. Um, I was a member of staff, but I knew exactly what they, what they were experiencing on an evening and so on. And the principal also gave me an opportunity to take that one step further. And every Thursday now, I work on the boarding house uh, up until half 10 at night, supporting the students, sitting with them for having dinner, um, and also then helping them with their prep. Obviously, if I don't understand one of the questions or I can't answer it, I just call down one of the older students, which is, which is absolutely fine. But, but you form those sort of relationships with, with students and you can talk about what it's like being a pupil when you're overseas. And that's what parents and that's what agents want to hear. Honest and very transparent um, responses to questions that they're asked. And I can talk genuinely and from the heart about how it feels being attached to a boarding house. I absolutely love this question because um, it's one of those questions that I think about all the time, what would actually make it better? And, and at first, the first thing that comes into your mind from a marketeer's point of view is budget. Oh, I'd love an unlimited budget where I can just do everything. But then you look at the bigger picture and think, well, actually, it's more challenging when you're given a budget and you, you strategically have to ensure that you're doing the right things. It's very easy to get too excited. We know when, well, I know when I go shopping, for example, I get too excited and just start spending money. And I should probably set a budget that way. But it's, it's one of those things that people always think about first, budget. But I'm very happy with, with the position I'm in at the moment in, in terms of making it better. I think it's something which I just know is not possible, and that's time. Um, and it's, it's finding the, the, the work-life balance, which I think is sometimes very difficult, certainly in my role, because... I'm sometimes taking phone calls at four o'clock in the morning because I have an agent calling from China um, and I'm on WeChat and my WeChat account is on 24 seven, but it's finding that, that balance and there's never enough time in the day to do everything that you want to. Um, so I know that's never going to be possible, but it is important to find that, that balance between family life and um, obviously work life as well. Um, but I love my role. So I, I do and I, I do get told off now and again by my partner that sometimes I need to switch off my emails. But I, I just when an email comes through, it's always it's well, it's generally positive and it's something which I'm like, right, there's a new challenge. Let's let's see what we can do. <laughs> I think when it comes to considering taking a job within the independent sector, I think advice, it depends on whether they're coming from a commercial background or whether they're already in the education sector. Because I, I've, or during networking meetings, I've come across um, members of staff in schools who have joined from a, a commercial background. And then a year later, when I'm hoping to see them again, they've actually already left. And they've gone back into the commercial world of, 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 of whichever area they came from. And I think it's because the independent sector is unique. Um, it is a unique sector. And it's, it's something which... You have to. You don't have to have an understanding when you join it, but it's it's important that you understand how it works. Um, just because because of how in the commercial side of things, there's a lot. I would say there's a lot more box ticking, whereas in the independent sector, it's a lot more irrational at times because you could suddenly be working on one project and then something else comes in because there are a lot of ad hoc jobs that come in when you, when you're in these sort of roles. But before considering applying for a job, I would say within an independent school is research the school. I think that is, that is certainly very important first. 
and, and look at the financials. We all know that schools are, are going through challenging times and I've, been, I've experienced a lot of challenges in my career. I've experienced a school merger, I've experienced a school closure and I wouldn't wish that on anyone. But I've learned a lot from that as well. And it's studying the financials before applying for a, for a role, I would say is very important. Looking at what the, what the governors do, what their backgrounds are, and um, the sort of values of the school to make sure it's something uh, or an environment that you're happy to work in. And also don't be shy to contact other people within the independent sector. Um, people will know that I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn and, and networking through LinkedIn. And don't be shy to send someone a message with it in an independent school or contact myself. I'm happy to, to, to talk about the independent sector um, and just ask questions, ask what it's actually like. What is it really like to work in a school and things like that? And um, like, I, like I said, I've never, I never thought I'd be in the education sector, but I've never looked back. Um, prior, to, prior to moving to Sedbury, I was offered a job um, for a car dealership, leading their marketing of the, the car dealership in Scotland. And I, uh, that decision, I just, I've realised I can't leave the education sector because I love it so much. Um, and, and that's something which, which obviously I don't regret because of, of where I am now. So that's something I say prior to looking at applying for a role in the independent sector. Once you're in position, um, fully immerse yourself in the actual school. Make sure you, 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 everyone knows who you are. Uh, make sure they know what you do and how you can help them. Okay, approach them in terms of how you can help them before sending them a whole load of requests saying, right, okay, I need this from you, that from you, and so on. There needs to be that level of building the relationship first. And, and like, I, like I said uh, earlier, Induction. Make sure that you are um, or you request, if it's not in place, a full induction program. Um, like, like I was very fortunate at Sedbury. I would say one of, one of the huge things that I've certainly stepped up in the last two years is networking. Um, since I became a board director for AMCUS and obviously attending their conferences, um, networking is a huge part. Of, of actually making sure you're aware of, of what's going on from a marketing, marketing admissions and communications background within schools, sharing good practice. Um, and those networking opportunities also give you opportunities to meet people that may help you further down the line or may actually open uh, other doors for you. Um, you may be headhunted for a different role somewhere else or, or things like that. And it, you, you don't do that unless you, or you won't be aware of it unless you actually take part in those networking events. And I think, like I said earlier, the COVID-19 issue has, has made us work um, together as a sector. And we will probably, and I hope, see more of uh, virtual conferences taking place even after COVID, um, as well as the face-to-face -face conferences um, for those who, obviously can't, may not be able to attend a two-day event or escape school, there still needs to be those opportunities to come together. Um, and look at opportunities of setting up regional, regional uh, groups of the, of the schools there. Like I said earlier, we are competitors in a way, but we, we are not in the same school, but we're in the same sector. And that's something which we must, must, must remember. We're trying to protect a sector here. So look at regional lunches, look at regional uh, meetings where you can come together and just actually talk. It doesn't have to be about work. It's amazing. Um, it does always get on to work, but um, it's amazing how many positives can come out of those sort of meetings. Obviously, my, my roles have evolved quite a bit over time from marketing full schools to then specifically focusing on international, back to marketing full schools and so on. And further down the line, obviously, at this moment in time, I'm very happy with what I'm doing. We've got a fantastic team. Um, but possibly more strategically focused roles, whether that was a chief operating officer's role, um, looking at the development of the school as a whole. 
overseas developments and things like that. That's, that's an area that I'm obviously very interested in and I do a lot of reading up on it already. Um, but there's lots, of, there's lots of opportunities out there and I think that's what this sector um, gives people. It's, it's, it opens doors. So there are opportunities to go becoming a school consultant, for example. There's nothing, there's nothing stopping you from just uh, actually working with many schools. Um, and there are a lot of consultants out there, a lot of outstanding consultants out there. But um, obviously some schools like to work with certain individuals. So there's those sort of opportunities there. And because of my international connections, never know, could, could end up being an agent. Uh, who knows, I could, I could end up being the one placing students in schools uh, and things like that. But those are the sort of opportunities which, which arise. Um, from from networking, from and from just obviously developing yourself um, throughout throughout your time in the sector. 